Fungi. The plural for fungus. I say fungi because I wouldn't say fungus, so I'm not going to say fungi, although some people do. So I'm going to say fungi, which kind of opens itself up for some puns, like, what do you mean you don't want to hang out? I'm a fungi, says the mushroom. <laughs> okay, that was a fake laugh. Deserves that. Sometimes puns deserve that. But anyway, they're more than puns. They're more than uh, a topping on your pizza, speaking of mushrooms. They're really, really important for any circle of, of life that you could talk about on Earth. Uh, here's our phylogenetic tree of life. We've talked about the domain bacteria, archaea, another domain. And then the last domain we're talking about and learning about is eukaryotes. Uh, we've talked about all the uh, biological junk drawer uh, of protists, which include all of the eukaryotes except for animals, plants, and what we want to take a closer look like look at now, uh, fungi. So that's what we're going to take a look. They are eukaryotes, meaning they have a nucleus. Uh, these eukaryotes, these fungi, are also are known as decomposers, taking dead material and waste and making something out of it and getting their energy from it. Uh, here's a look at all of the eukaryotes. You've seen this before, but all of these are protists, except for a couple of these kingdoms. Uh, and one of those kingdoms would include fungi. You can split up fungi into different, many different classifications or phyla. Uh, and uh, the other classification levels below that. Uh, so we're going to take a look at fungi, especially in this video. Uh, before we get to those types, we are going to talk about how important they are. You might think of them as, all right, I, I can live with a world in a world without mushrooms on my pizza. It goes beyond just food, although food is awfully wonderful and I love it and I love talking about it too. But it's more than just food and more than the yeast and the bread, which is also t a type of fungi. Let's talk about plant growth. Uh, Fungi really recycle the nutrients uh, really well. Think of a, a tree or a forest getting so much of the nutrients uh, from the, the soil, uh, as much nutrients as it needs to grow. And in a forest of trees, that's a lot of nutrients getting taken out of the soil. How does it get back in? With the help of decomposers, the dead trees and the dead uh, plant matter. Uh, the detritus, detritus, uh, is uh, broken down, decomposed by fungi, and those uh, nutrients go right back into the soil. That's huge. Now something else can grow there after something dies. Uh, without fungi, you probably don't have that as much. You don't. Uh, it also helps directly plants grow. Uh, mycorrhiza is a kind of fungus that helps roots uh, find water and find nutrients from the soil and you can see how plant growth is affected by that association without that fungus there even grass is not growing very well uh, in otherwise rich uh, nutrient rich soil um, it also uh, gives us medicine penicillin the first antibiotic used by humans to kill bacteria is penicillin is actually uh, a type of mold, which is a type of fungus. Uh, so it's important there. And then controlling the population of insects. Uh, there are certain ways that, that fungi in nature can do this and control uh, and keep everything in balance. So they do play a huge part. Here are some common characteristics for fungi. I already said they're eukaryotic. They have nuclei. They have membrane-bound organelles. They're heterotrophic. They can't make their own food. They've got to get their energy in another way, and most of them will decompose um, other dead things to get that energy. They have a cell wall. Their cells have a cell wall. It's made of chitin, which is really tough in most cases and makes for a, a good protective covering for that cell. And uh, fungi generally have hyphae, which is like a filament-like, you can see in the picture here on this mold, uh, a, a growth that comes out of the spore or the sex cells of these fungi, 
and eventually it matures into um, a full-grown fungus, a mature fungus. All right, here are some types. Uh, you've heard of uh, like mushroom, like club fungi, perhaps club mushrooms. That's the those are known as basidiomycota. Uh, molds is another type of fungi. Bread molds are in uh, this classification. Zygomycota, uh, sac fungi, and mycorrhiza are maybe lesser well known, uh, but still they those are the major types of fungi. Uh, how do they reproduce? Uh, some of this is new. They can reproduce asexually, some of them, where a bud begins to form on a parent cell and eventually it separates and you have DNA or um, genetic material in each cell and then it matures further. Uh, there is a type of sexual reproduction that occurs when a sporangia bursts, a mature sporangia bursts. These spores are released and there are spores pretty much everywhere in every breath that you take you're probably taking in some type of fungus spore which is not pleasant to think about but they are everywhere they're very good at spreading and being where they need to be now they're not going to grow unless they have the right conditions so that's good um, but anyway these spores are released uh, some of them with different qualities like male female type of thing and eventually they grow together uh, to form another sporangia. Uh, so we have a kind of a life cycle, a sexual uh, reproduction there. Uh, fungi don't really move all that much. Uh, they are stationary, kind of like plants. They do have root-like structures for attachment and you can see that there are different types of tissues that work together to form the whole organism here. Here are some parts of a mushroom, a uh, common fungus, uh, the cap is on top. There are gills uh, underneath that release it, uh, release the spores. Uh, this structure right here is known as the ring. There's a stalk, and then those hyphae do a good job of finding or, or acting like roots and uh, making that plant st or that fungus that fungus stationary. Um, I say they're stationary, but if you look at anything under time lapse it really doesn't seem stationary anymore uh, so if you want to watch a time lapse of a mushroom grow I'll include the link to that video in the show notes we'll keep going right now so how do they make a living how do they get their nutrition uh, many of them are saprophytes saprophytes means they are decomposers of dead organisms uh, that's where you will see most fungi uh, come in and and decompose uh, dead material, recycle the nutrients along the way. Saprophytes are a, a big part of uh, an ecosystem in, in, in its ability to recycle nutrients. Uh, some of these get their energy from other living things and they live alongside uh, other things like algae. Lichens, which are a type of fungus, uh, are mutualistic with algae. They grow together and they can grow in uh, damp, shaded spots, usually right on top of rocks, so they don't even need a lot of soil or anything like that. But they are mutualistic. They get their energy from another organism, but they also help that organism. So there's kind of a, a positive relationship between both, and that's mutualism. Some of them can be parasitic, and uh, the example here is there's actually a cordyceps it's called a type of fungus that will get inside an ant and then be get to begin to control it from the inside. It's almost, it makes the ant a zombie, basically. And it programs the brain of the ant to go to a location where it will grow best. So like on top of a leaf or on the underside of a leaf even. And it will then kill the ant and then start growing. Uh, where it needs to grow. So since it, when it can't move itself, it just programs the ant to do it, which is crazy. And that's a parasite. Obviously, it's not good for the ant. It's great for the fungus, 